He is an interventional cardiologist and voted top doctors two consecutive years, two years in a row. And he is also a very dear friend of mine. We are actually, he's hosting this show for me in his beautiful home. I'd like to welcome Dr. Zia Khan. Thank How you, are Rowena. you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, thank it's, you. Be, it's been a while since I talked to you last. I know, I've missed you. I missed you too. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to move over there and you two can sit here? And go, Although you know, we talked to I'm each other okay. You're just in between us. Every single yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you're saving her from me. Okay, from, from, you. from me. <laughs> for the moment, okay, yes. <laughs> so, let's talk about, um, a lot of people don't know what interventional cardiology is, uh, does. Sure. What exactly do you do? So you know, the inter well, you know, cardiologist is a heart doctor. Heart, yes. uh, interventional cardiologist is someone who actually does procedures in order to treat the patient, as opposed to prescribing medicines, both preventative and you know therapeutic. Mm -hmm. So we actually do procedures like going through people's arteries, uh, balloon angioplasty, stents. Mm -hmm. I sometimes call myself a glorified a plumber. We yeah. use rotor oh, rooters. Yeah. He's also a comedian. I've got a I've got a guest bathroom that I need you to take care of. You can the toilet in it is a little bit clogged. I tell at times. you, as long as that and guest you, bathroom is in your chest, okay, I'll take, take, care of it. take care of it. <laughs> and, and it's well, and, and and it ain't cheap, but at the same time, it's certainly better than a quadruple bypass. Okay, at, is is that are you preventing a much larger expense for the medical industry for, with a quadruple, let's say, a, a bypass surgery? as opposed to what you do. Absolutely, okay. and I don't know whether you knew it, but you made a very important point. Oh, no, no, I didn't know it. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I read the cue card. It's uh, <laughs> we right. say that about that, okay. Well, no. the, trend, the trend over the last few years has been to get away from invasive surgeries. Ripping like open the ripping chest. Ripping over the chest, putting with these attendant complications of pneumonia, prolonged ventilation, prolonged recovery, hospitalization. More and more, we get developing therapies that we can actually just either from the wrist or from the groin area enter a patient's artery, put in a put, go into the diseased artery, clean it out, become the plumbing part, clean it out, put a balloon, and open it, open and it up, then, open it up, put a stent to prop it open, and get out of there. The patient recovers in three hours, walking around. So better. they're most, huh. mostly out, outpatients? Well, they can yeah. be, but we tend to keep them at least a day in the hospital mm -hmm. after having done that. But compare that to like a week or so of recovery in an ICU with any tube down your throat. I mean, we've come a long way. What closes the arteries? High cholesterol? Diet? Genetics? Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a multifactorial thing. Genetics is a, certainly very important, but the five biggies, genetics, hypertension, diabetes, smoking, being a male, and then having some other attendant uh, underlying disease like chronic renal failure oh, okay. or other hyperlipidemia, like more high cholesterol, familial I have tattoos. High blood so pressure, so yeah. I'm, I'm, I take a, a, a cocktail of different, different drugs uh, for that one in the morning, two in the afternoon, and statins are involved in that somewhere. And I hear statins as a, as a miracle drug. I hate to call anything a miracle drug, but that they are one of the great things that we've discovered in this day and age yeah. to help prevent. Is that Absolutely. right? Absolutely. You're, you're right. When, before statins came along, we really didn't... The only real treatment we had for cholesterol, high cholesterol, that made any difference was diet. And you, you got tired of telling people to change their diet. You know how that goes. Yeah. People try for a week, two weeks, two months, go right back to their old habits. But they did a huge study back in the late 70s in... Um, Switzerland, I mean, in Sweden, in the Scandinavian country, okay. and that's where they evaluated the effect of statins. And not only did it lower cholesterol and prolong mortality and morbidity, in some later analysis, it actually shrank the amount of plaque that's oh. depositing. And that's very few therapies do that. It's not by a huge amount, but by and large, stat if you tolerate statins, don't have the side effects, you're, 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 you're one, you know, grade ahead of... Uh, in treatment. Right. Yeah. So, it, it, so what are the best things a person can do with high blood pressure? How can they prevent that from from? Well, preventing high blood pressure is really hard because, mm -hmm. by and large, essential hypertension, what it's called, is a genetic issue. You are born with the propensity. What you can do is limit the effect of it by taking due precautions, regular exercise, mm -hmm. 
optimal weight, lose weight, um, and of course avoid all the other causes that may precipitate. Like again, we go back to smoking, bad sleeping habits, stressful lifestyles. All these contribute to high blood mm -hmm. pressure. Diet. That's, that's there you go. Mean. Yeah. I mean, and that's all of us. <laughs> in 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 twenty. 17, I guess it's 2017 now, but in, in this day and age, right, you, 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 we still live a very fast-paced lifestyle in this country more than anywhere else in the world. Now, this is fascinating because well, everybody yeah. needs to know this. No, well, yeah. and, and I'm curious what inspired you to get into cardiology. Was there anything that you... That well, you know, obviously I went into medical school not knowing what I would end up being. But just going through medical school, I saw not only the extent of cardiology, cardiac diseases, but also I was looking for something that was kind of surgical, yet involved some thinking and logic to it. Not that surgeons don't think, but, mm -hmm. you know, that's a pure art form right. in a way. I wanted one of, a bit of both, and cardiology lends itself to that. Second, it's like, it's like a very clean line, you know, it's like you don't deal with a lot of chronic illnesses, you go in and you actually make a difference, you fix it, you save lives in the middle of the night, you impact people's lives almost immediately. Right. So now, those are the things. Now, talking about uh, saving lives, Dr. Khan is a big, he's a big advocate for human rights and also um, uh, helping people. He has uh, a charitable organization that he's, he's it's, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm putting, growing. yes, so we, I'm putting together and still waiting for its, you know, charitable tax exemption. It's called the Imagine Foundation. We started that a couple of years ago and really started in, 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 in there were the huge floods in uh, Kashmir, India, both India and Pakistan. I was there when you did that. Right, so that was our first foray into global charitable work. Following that, under the banner of Imagine Foundation, we did a fundraiser for Syrian refugees. So that really got sealed the kind of direction I wanted to take this foundation to. So we're going to look at helping anybody who has been affected by circumstances that are not of their own making. Mm -hmm. Wars, floods, and we're going to go directly to help the people, not through a third partner, nothing. It goes directly to people. Yeah. So like the Syrian refugees, we got the families, we did a fundraiser, we didn't go with anybody. We took cash to them, mm -hmm. not give them cash. Mm -hmm. Know what their needs are, mm -hmm. go and buy those, mm -hmm. deliver it to them. Mm -hmm. So and, that's and the that, kind of yeah. help we want to that, do. That's very yeah. important, too. Because oh, no, yeah. ab absolutely, because, you know, yeah. in so, so many conflicts of, around the world yeah. today, and, and, and there's, there's uh, the, the money and the food, the resources, mm -hmm. don't get to the don't people. Get to they get what? stolen by rebel armies oh, to yeah. take in their birthday. And you go through a lot yeah. of red tape with different organizations and different foundations. Absolutely, so. and it's, it's, it's asinine. You'll have a, you'll have a foundation whose, whose job is charitable, but 80% of its budget it is in advertising and administration. 20% administration. goes mm -hmm. to the people who need it. Exactly. So we want to do all that, mm -hmm. do away with all that. We don't want to necessarily advertise ourselves, we just want to be there to yeah. help them and get out and help the next person. And mm -hmm. just, you know, it's just a feel good thing and the bunch of people that I have put together, they're all of the same opinion. We don't need to help anybody, but we want to help mm -hmm. them. Oh. I, and I know you're, he's a very humble guy, he doesn't want to talk about this, but he's been voted top doctors two years in a row. How do you feel about, I, I mean, how does that feel? They feel like, why, why would they do that to me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have no clue. Who votes? Are the, is it patients? <laughs> well, so wait a minute, he saved my life. Goodness gracious, I'm putting him up at number one. Or is it other doctors that vote for it? Is it I think it's, it's a bit of both. And, uh, both? Yeah, okay. It depends. Okay. Yeah. So funny you bring it up, but it's in different publications do it differently. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the current one is peer voted as yeah. well as patient recommendation. There's one coming up which yeah. I... I just was asked to stay mm -hmm. ready for photographs. I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. so watch what happens. But I no, don't if, know. if you saved my life, I'd vote for you. Thank I would you. vote for you number one. I would Thank say, you. no, wait a second. <laughs> at least, at least top ten, probably number one. I'd probably number one. Number one. especially um, if somebody saved you. Okay, life. <laughs> there's there's a lot of talk right now because it's hot on everybody's mind of what's going on with the Affordable Care Act, with now a new um, act in Congress to be able to replace some of the elements, maybe replace it all. Where, where are you at on that? Where, where should the country go? Where's, and I know healthcare is very complicated, way over-regulated right. in some ways, and that's 
one of the damaging things. But what, what, what do you think? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the hot topic these days. I look at it from the point of view, this is the strongest, richest, the best place on earth to not only live, grow up, and retire, and whatever. Yet, we cannot give universal health care to all of our citizens. We are the richest country on the planet. So it's a shame all around. The way I see it, it is our duty, moral duty, to provide this to everyone. It shouldn't become a political issue. It shouldn't be a Republican or Democrat issue. What the Affordable Care Act under Obama did is try to reach there. It is by no means perfect. It is a lot of problems. And, but I think this is the way I would approach it. In a bipartisan way, what we should do is get together and say, make a list of everything that's wrong with it. Not sweep it away and then come up with something new, but we, it's been done. We've been there and done that. You are never perfect the first try. You always have to improve. Let's get all, let's all get together. Not take 23 million people off insurance and start from scratch. Don't give tax breaks to people who don't need it. Don't, give, don't help the people who need it the most. The, the, the older, the poorer, and these are the people who need it. My premium goes up, you know, I can afford it. Your premium goes up, you can afford it. And I'm sure, Ron, you can afford our premiums as I'm just well. gonna call you up and say, hey doc, can you help me out? You know, no, 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 get, no. The, get the plumbing I, going. I can call you. I text in the middle of the night, and I'm like, what am I gonna do? What am I supposed to do? My high, my blood pressure is up. So, so, so to wrap it up, I think get it can be sleep. done. Get some sleep. He's gonna say, go back to bed. I know, I don't I know she does that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but my, my, my point is it can be done. It needs the willpower. It needs, it needs them to put their different ideology and this and politics and this and that aside. Get it done, guys, because we have, we have, we have landed people on the moon. We, we've gone to, you know, we've gone out into the universe and we've done great things in this country. You can't do this. We are behind Australia, Sweden in our mortality and mobility. Come on. You know what? We need more doctors like you that really care about patients. Um, I, you know what? I'm, I'm hearing about. I'm hearing this from different people. Okay, there's doctors that just care about, you know, how much money they make. I mean, we need to bring back the old ways where doctor really is there to, um, you know, take care of their patients. Yeah, I, I mean, it's changing. It's, I know. it's changing. And you know, in, in Las Vegas, it gets a bad rap. You, I'm sure you've been, you've interviewed a million people and you've been here forever. You, we get a bad rap for medical care as far as for both primary medical care and specialist medical care. It takes dedication to establish yourself. It takes a certain amount of energy to keep going. You know, I have to, sometimes I'll get a call in 3 a.m. in the middle of the night, happened just last week. Somebody's dying with a heart attack that I have to open his artery up in about 30 minutes or his toast. Wow. So, so, but, but you do it and then you come back and you try and grab the one or two hours because your next day doesn't change. Nobody took away the seven procedures you had on the thing. They're still to be They're done. They're still there and you yeah, gotta get those done. Yeah. So you need dedication, you need hard work and you need to believe that you can make a difference. And if you, make, if you really believe it, I think you can do it. I mean, you have to believe. You can't be jaded. You can't get burnt out. You can't give in. That's what keeps me going. Well, there used to be a time here in Vegas where people would go to L.A. for medical care because of, we didn't have the doctors here to be able yes. to do some of the procedures. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I had a son who had a hole in his heart as a, as a new, as newborn, and he, he had it um, born with it, a heart defect. Yeah, yeah. By the time he was five years old, um, they decided to go in and do the repairs. And the, the only way you can fix that is go in and do the repairs. You can't, I don't, I don't know, unless something new has happened. Actually, you know what? You're so, talking to the person who closes holes in the no, heart. No, seriously? From, okay, from, no, wait a second. Because Troy had to have open heart oh. surgery. Well, it all depends. Um, Maybe he had a complex. But, well, but this was, again, this was 20, 30, uh, let's see, 25 years ago. Oh, yeah. So it was 25 years ago. Yeah. So that's all they knew how to do. Yeah. And it was yeah. one of the first ones done yeah. here in Las Vegas. Yeah. And, and so the doctors that did a great surgeons so here. He, he, stayed here. he stayed here and yeah. did it here. Uh, was the See, first, I think, at Sunrise. thank you for the confidence in yes. Las Vegas. Oh, no, that we said... You're right. Most find, people would head to the airport. Uh, head oh, to yes. But, yes. but you don't have to do that anymore. Now you've told me something fascinating that you can go in... Not always. But sometimes, sometimes you still do, depending thing. on the complexity. But simply, quite simply, now we can... These holes, we go across them with the umbrella-like device. Two discs. Perhaps one wow. disc on this side of the hole. 
the other one on this side, detach it, come on out. And Troy, and and Troy wouldn't have the zipper on his chest no, he anymore. Would not. Yeah. He so, would not. yeah. <laughs> and then cells grow on it, it becomes part of your body. Wow. So, yeah. And he's also a comedian. Oh, Perfect. Yeah. I, I mean, when you go to his like office, a doctor that cracks yeah, jokes. I mean, you gotta have jokes. that. <laughs> I mean, at the, at the first time I, I went to his office, if there was like a camera in the room, <laughs> we would be like, we were laughing. Well, I was yeah, like, she came what? for an appointment, and all we did is laugh. Laugh, laugh, laugh. And the staff yeah. is like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> he's actually my my my. He's he's a great stress reliever for me. He makes me laugh. I'd like to thank you so much for hosting us in this beautiful home My of pleasure, yours. Rowena, my pleasure. You do such a lot of good work for the community. And a pleasure to see you, Ron. And I just you, do sports and hang out and no, talk no, to no, athletes no, no. and have I've fun. I've watched your career, you. don't worry. It's been a fun You know, one. you have this knack of not only putting the interview at ease, it's like you're having a conversation. Yes. yes. And oh, that's so. your thank forte. You. Yeah. So yeah, thank you, thank you for problem. coming to no, my house. My, my pleasure. No. I feel blessed that I have friends like you. You're a good pizza, pe good pizza back like there, you. too. Yes. So that's yes. Nice. Yes. So, yes, well, no, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, Thanks Ron. for coming on. Thank Appreciate you so it. much. My pleasure.